So what's keeping you awake tonight? For a long time, and even going back to the years before I went back to school to get my degree, I kind of had this theory about how the media was going to evolve in the internet age. Whoever came up with a platform that combined both ease of use and marketability was going to be the major media source for the next generation. And who could have thought that when this simple 19 second video hit the net back in 2005, it would be the catalyst for that evolution. Now YouTube turned 10 years old this week and in that span it went from being just another fringe idea to becoming the primary outlet for media consumption on the planet. Now the figures are a little hard to get your head around but they speak for themselves. By 2006, a year after it went online, YouTube had 1 million viewers watching 100 million hours of content a day. Now according to recent statistics, YouTube is so big that one-sixth of the entire world's population, that'd be about a billion people if math isn't your strong suit, are both uploading and watching more than 6 billion hours of video content every month. Approximately 300 hours worth of video content is uploaded to YouTube every 60 seconds, and it's now available in 61 languages around the globe. Now, having worked in the media for the majority of the last decade myself, I saw as far back as 2007 the signs that this was going to be the next step in the media's evolution. But by 2012, when we started seeing presidential debates streamed for free on YouTube by both traditional and paid cable TV networks, Works, the reality had set in that the landscape as we understood it had changed. Now for most of the 20th century, the media triangle of radio, television, and newspapers were able to coexist because they all made money capitalizing on advertising revenue either through commercials or program sponsorships. What limited internet media from truly taking over the time was no one had yet figured out the best way to make it work as a revenue generating entity. But what YouTube realized was that by having advertising bookend content, as unpleasant as that may be for the casual user, was the least obtrusive way to have it start making money. The strategy has paid off so well, in fact, that according to a recent Bank of America analysis report, YouTube is worth more than $70 billion, which according to a recent Bloomberg Business News report, makes it worth more than 434 of the 500 companies on the Standard & Poor's 500 stock index combined. If you break it all down, YouTube's success really comes down to two things that conventional media simply doesn't offer. Free and open access to virtually any content and allowing free creative contributions from literally anyone. Now you have to kind of understand how media works behind the scenes to fully appreciate just how revolutionary that is. And having worked in television, radio, and newspapers, they all have one thing in common exclusivity. Both breaking into it and getting anywhere in it usually involves having to convince somebody like an editor, a program director, or a television network executive that whatever it is that you want to create is worth their investment. That also means that if your idea doesn't either sell copies or generate substantial ratings, then you are gone in a nanosecond, replaced by another ambitious someone whose idea will hopefully do the job of making them money. But YouTube has none of that. It is truly wide open and unrestricted airspace, and we have never had that before, ever. The healthy byproduct of that being that there's infinitely more choice both as a producer and as a consumer of media. If you want educational content, there's channels available covering every subject you could learn about in the average school year. Things like TED Talks give us unlimited access to some of the most innovative thinkers of our time addressing real world issues impacting everyone around the world. If you want to take up a hobby like learning how to cook, you can go with someone classic like Julia Child or check out something from America's Test Kitchen. If you like music, you can go find new and popular hits or go back to something more old school or even find new artists you might not have heard before. If you like history, you can find something like watching the largest atomic bomb ever made going off. If gaming is more your thing, you can watch someone play video games in real time. You can watch the very first episode of The Price is Right from 40 years ago or even people sitting around a table laughing over cards against humanity. Or if you like pop or geek culture, there's no end of channels where you can see people like Adam Savage build stuff or even talk about stuff. I think one of the biggest surprises of YouTube, though, is that it's also created personalities that likely wouldn't have ever been discovered through conventional media. From people like Zay Frank to John and Hank Green, Pomp Lamoose, Becky O, and even all the way down to little old me. There are producers who have thousands, if not millions of viewers coming back to see what they post. And all it takes is someone having a camera and being willing to sit in front of it long enough to convey an idea. Now, does that mean YouTube is perfect? No. For everything that garners a share of popularity, there are also things that bring in a whole lot of notoriety. Let's not kid ourselves. We probably wouldn't have the idea of being Rickrolled were it not for YouTube. We also wouldn't have something like this. Gangnam Style. Or this. Carl, we're supposed to be on vacation. I don't know about you, but I am having a wonderful time here. Or this. <laughs> the 
The bottom line though is that YouTube has permanently altered the course of how media will be both consumed and produced going forward. We've simply never had the means to have so much widespread access to that much content instantaneously with as much choice or as flexibility in our history. It's gonna be fascinating to see what directions it goes in over the next 10 years, who else it's gonna inspire, and how it's gonna to continue to shape the media landscape that we have right now. But on that note, it's late. So get some sleep. That's where dreams are gonna get there.